look at GC2, uh, Worksheet 6. This one is all about angles and arc angles. Man, do I like this area. There's These guys that you're going to work on are like these tiny little mini puzzles. And you basically are just kind of finding all these different angles and adding them up and subtracting them to find more angles. I love these problems and these diagrams. I just want to kind of introduce two key terms. Uh, one you should already know at this stage, which is uh, a central angle. A central angle, of course, goes to the center of the circle. Now, there is always an assumption that the point out there in the center is the center. It often comes with the name, it'll say, in circle H, so you know H is the center. But you can assume it's the center. Uh, they will let you know when it doesn't go through the center, kind of like this. Um, they'll let you know when it is or isn't the center. It'll be obvious. So the central angle, of course, is a, a vertex at the center. We've already learned that whatever it is, if it's 50 degrees, then it's 50 degrees out here as well. The arc angle always equals the uh, central angle. Uh, another type of angle is called uh, an inscribed, inscribed angle. An inscribed angle, you'll notice, has its vertex uh, out on the circle. So um, it is not to the center, but it's got all three of its points on the circle. So it subtends or sits on arc AB here. Now, we'll maybe look at a little investigatory work to figure out why this is, and there's a nice little proof to it. But at this stage, I'm going to just talk to the fact that it's exactly half the size of this. So if this is 80 out here, then this is 40. Now think, if we'd gone to the center, it would have been 80. Think about it going further than the center. It's so lucky that it's exactly half. That is so nice. 80, 40, 50, 25, super easy. But these guys, the central angles, the inscribed angle guys, they are critical, huge, important, and super fun to work with. I'd show you some cool little things that happen. Um, one cool thing is that if you inscribe uh, an angle, this is inscribed because it uh, starts on the circle, goes to the circle, ends on the circle, it's inscribed. It's sitting on a diameter of 180, right? So this is actually a 90 degree angle. Super cool. And the truth is, is you can make as many of those as you want. If I just take any point from B and go to the circle's edge and to A, that is also 90 because it's inscribed on 180. And this is 90 over here as well because it's inscribed on the diameter. That is a neat thing to know that any inscribed angle on a diameter is 90 degrees. Another cool thing to know is that this inscribed angle would be half 20. That's not all that neat. We just talked about that. But anybody that you inscribe from those same two points, here's that arc of 40, would be 20. This is 20. This is 20. And I can make a whole lot of those inscribed angles. They'll all be equal because they're all sitting on the arc of 40, so they'll all be 20. Here, I want to show you this. This angle is not inscribed. See? Not at the edge of the circle. Not at the center. We'll learn a better technique for this in a minute or two, or a worksheet or two down the line. But for now, all you do with these kind that are what I call internal angles, just use your basic triangle relationships. Um, so just think of this as triangles, okay? So let me just show you how I would get to this one. 50 makes, uh, this arc is 50 here, so this would be 25. Inscribed angle is half. This is 80, so this inscribed angle up here is 40. Now that comes to 65. That angle in this corner, this is a poorly drawn triangle, don't, don't, uh, don't get uh, too critical here. It comes to 65, which leaves me with 115 degrees. And so this would be 115 in this corner, and that leaves me with 65 right there as my value. Because uh, these are a linear pair here, and they add to 180. If you know the exterior angle theorem, that would also work in there too, but I don't know if you know that yet. 
Sorry about the diagram, it does not look like 115 and 65, but the way I labeled it, trust me it is. Here's one last thing too. Uh, you're going to get asked to find angles like this one. <clears throat> and uh, there's issues with that guy because um, it's not inscribed. It kind of is, right? Because it's, it's on the circle. Um, I see some people extending this, and actually you can do that to make it inscribed. Uh, yeah, let's, let's play that out. This is a cool idea. Somebody in my class this last year did this, and I really like it. So if this is the center, it doesn't look like it. It's pretty roughed in. But they've extended it so that it became an inscribed, which means that it's 80 to here. There'd be 100 left over because that's a diameter. And so this is a 50 down here. One way to do it. I like it. Let me give you another way. This is 80. Central angle's the same. Now here's a clue to always remember about circles. Any lines that go, any uh, segments that go from the center to the edge of the circle are radii and always equal. They always make isosceles triangles. So, 80's gone, hundreds left. Guess what? 50 in each corner. There's the 50 anyways, but we also got it this way. That's what I love about these, the puzzling. You're going to find lots of puzzling. Use this idea. Central angle is equal to arc angle. Inscribed angle is exactly half of that uh, arc angle. To find angles out in the middle, just hiding out there, just fill in a lots of angles and use your triangles, linear pairs, exterior angles. You'll find them all. It'll be fun, I promise.